Howdy folks, Donnie again, and in this video I'd like to look at this topic of secure shell keys. And this is an article from CMSWire.com. SSH, of course, is a suite of different utilities that you can use to have encrypted access to, to remote computers. And you have the SSH utility, which you can use to just open a remote command line into a remote computer. You also have SCP and SFTP, which you can use to do encrypted file transfers. You also have the one utility which is lesser known, it's SSHFS, where you can actually share out a directory from one server with other people on the network and that will be encrypted as well. But the problem with Secure Shell is that there's kind of a misunderstanding about it. A lot of people say, okay, yeah, it's it's great. Everything's going to be encrypted, so it's all good, right? Well, not really. Uh, the default configuration for Secure Shell, when you first set up a server, it's actually quite insecure. There are things that you need to do to harden it, to make it more secure, and we'll look at that stuff in a different video. But for right now, I just want to look at the topic of SSH user keys. Now, with Secure Shell, one of the things that you can do is to make it so that you will not be sending a password across the network. And to do that, you can just go ahead and set up a set of keys. And each user can set up a set of keys and then each user will send the public key to the server. And then that way the server will recognize when that person is going to log on and will automatically let that person in without having to send a password across the network. Now that's really great because by, by doing that the hackers, you know, the, the people who and, and the bots who scan the internet looking for internet facing servers with secure shell enabled, you know, they'll scan those servers that have the password authentication disabled and then they'll just go away. They won't scan it anymore. But if they find a server with password authentication enabled, then the bots will just launch a brute force password cracking attack at that server. So just being able to uh, disable the password authentication and use keys, that's a big, big help. But the problem is that in large enterprises, there's in a lot of cases, there's not enough attention being paid to the care of these SSH keys to, to keeping track of them because this is one of those things and we can look down here and we can see the problem with all those keys is that the uh, most of them have gone unmanaged okay and so uh, and here it says it's typical to find up to 4 billion SSH ah, get out of there I don't mean to do that. Anyway, it's typical to find up to 4 million SSH user keys providing interactive and machine-to-machine -machine based access in a typical financial enterprise with 20,000 Unix and Linux servers. And in many cases, we see that 10 to 20 percent of these keys provide root level access and cannot be associated to an owner within the enterprise. And I should say too that uh, it, it doesn't really say it here, but a lot of these keys, when they're providing machine-to-machine -machine access, that means that there are no passphrases assigned to the private keys in those uh, uh, in those servers. So, uh, so that's another problem. So, the uh, the thing is, uh, we've got all these keys. And you know, there, there a lot of different companies, you know, they, they don't know how to keep track of them, right? And so that, that is a problem. And so, uh, so here we have the three technical considerations about the keys, uh, which 
kind of explain the problem. And uh, SSH user keys, only form of access that users can prevent provision themselves without oversight or control. So yeah, uh, uh, if they have if they have the password, you know, or the logon credentials to a particular server, you know, uh, a user can go back to his own desktop and create his own set of keys and transfer that public key to the to the server, right? Assuming that it still has a password authentication uh, enabled because that's required for the user to be able to transfer the key. But, uh, uh, and then, you know, there's that private key there, that extra private key that he just created, right? And, you know, the private keys, I mean, you absolutely got to keep those things safe, got to keep those secure. You know, your public keys it's entirely different matter. Your public keys you can share with the entire world. It doesn't matter. Nobody can take your public key and use it to decrypt something that is not addressed to them. Okay? So that's not a problem. But you let that private key out, then it's all over. And uh, because then once somebody has your private key, he can access anything of yours that he wants to. Right? So that's the same thing here with the, the private keys on the server. So as private keys get out and, you know, uh, the uh, hackers then who get them can access anything, right? And so, uh, so there, there's not enough, you know, in a lot of companies, there's just not enough control over you know, the users being, a, being able to make their own keys. Now, there is a way to get around that, that you can, uh, you can just go ahead and set these keys up to begin with, right? Uh, for when somebody sets up a server, you know, uh, just go around, set up everybody's keys and transfer the public keys to the server and then just go ahead and uh, lock that server down so that pass, so that uh, uh, password authentication is will no longer work that way the, the users can you know create all the keys they want to and it's you know it, they're not going to be able to transfer them to that server uh but of course they're still going to have the the keys those those pub those private keys you know that they created on their own machines so we need a way you know to be able to control that also unlike uh, certificates unlike ssl certificates SSH user keys don't have expiration dates. And so that is a problem in a couple of different ways. For one thing, uh, SSH user based, a key based access continues to exist even after an application is decommissioned or a user leaves the company. And there's another little wrinkle with that too, and that's the fact that you're going to have a lot of keys out there from older machines which and of course as we say they never expire but they're from older machines so they're using an older uh, algorithm you know an older uh, encryption algorithm like you might have a lot of 1024 bit DSA keys out there which is going to be extremely weak extremely easy to crack but you know they're still valid and you know no expiration they're going to be there forever so you so you got them uh, and then SSH user keys do not need to be associated to a user account. So this means a key will not necessarily establish the identity of the user associated with it. So when an SSH key is generated, that identity that is associated is not connected. So, uh, so it's not like your SSL certificates where you're going to have an identity attached to that certificate. Well, I mean, unless it's a self-signed certificate. But, uh, but with secure shell keys, there's no way to an, attach an identity to an SSH user key. Okay, so anybody who has that key, anybody who has that private key, can use it. Okay, so uh, so anyway, what about the imp implications about secure shell keys? So. Uh, we have a lack of regulatory oversight and governance of SSH user key access, and we have a lack of understanding of the technical aspects, 
aspects of the SSH protocol. Okay, and then uh, and then we have SSH, the primary means by which malicious actors move laterally within an enterprise to gain access to new access and further elevate privilege, as well as how they exfiltrate data and as assets from an organization. So in other words, uh, let's say that we have a system set up where we have keys that don't have any uh, passphrase attached to them, private keys, no passphrase attached to them, and we're using those keys to be able to have two machines communicate with each other automatically. I mean, it could be for any number of reasons, you know, to do like uh, automatic uh, backups, for example, you know, to another machine, to a backup server, or uh, to, to send logs automatically to another server, you know, something like that. So uh, with those private keys that don't have the passphrases attached, you know, once somebody breaks into one of those machines, then they can just move right over to the other machine with, uh, by not having to uh, know any type of passphrase or password, you know, for that machine. So a uh, lot of implications like that. And uh, also there's just the fact that if those, if those, SSH keys get out, cyber criminals, okay, they're going to get them. And so once they, once they get those private keys, they can gain access to the assets. And then from there, they often create new key pairs, which will generate them access to the outside directly or move those assets automatically to servers in the cloud. So that's kind of scary stuff, right? So there's also the problem that when cyber criminals can get hold of, of users' private keys or, you know, private keys from servers, uh, you know, they can, they can do anything. They can get into customers' data. They can get into our intellectual property, and we lose our reputation, and in turn, we lose revenue and shareholder value. So uh, lots of implications to when t attackers get our secure shell keys. And of course, if uh, an attack like this happens, it could also result in downtime. If, uh, if the hackers get into our systems with those private keys and, uh, you know, uh, erase our data or whatever else, right? And the scary part too, up here, who's minding a store? Well, believe it or not, there are not a lot of access controls here, not a lot of definitions for these access controls, not, not a lot of guidelines here for how to uh, be able to specifically use these keys. All right. So then what do we do? What do we do? Well, uh, we obviously need something. Now, there are free open source products out there, uh, like, for example, free IPA that we can use to manage users public keys but we don't really have any free open source products that, can, that we can use to manage the private keys so if you're working in a business setting and you need to know how to uh, or you need a product to be able to to help keep track of all these private keys uh, there are a few products out there uh, cyber arc ssh key manager is one of them uh, we can also look at SSH.com. This is the commercial version of SSH. This is not the free open source version of SSH that we're used to. Uh, but still, they have products which, as you can see, uh, they'll help you manage your SSH keys. And uh, just uh, for full disclosure, I'm not getting any type of kickbacks from these companies for advertising them. I just want to show you what's out there. Okay, so anyway, uh, yeah, if you work in an enterprise setting, uh, definitely, definitely check out some sort of product to help manage these keys because uh, trust me, you need it. Anyway, that's all for now. In a future video, we can take a closer look at SSH itself and see how to tighten it up a little bit, how to make it a little bit more secure than it is by default. But for now, I think that's it. So if you like the videos, be sure to subscribe and like them, and we will see you next time.